So inflation is taking a toll on Americans' wallets, especially in the Bay Area, where gas is over $6 a gallon and everyday grocery items cost more than ever before. Millions of Californians can look forward to some relief next month thanks to the middle class tax refund approved by lawmakers. Eligible Californians will receive $200 to $1,000 everybody on the tax filing status beginning October. Californians who receive the going through the stimulus check, also via direct deposit, will be the first to receive the tax refund. The first round of payments are expected to be between October 7th and October 25th for the checks everybody. Californians who filed their taxes online and received the refund via direct deposit can also expect this latest payment the same way. Those who filed a paper return or received the refund by a check or received the payment via a debit card in the mail. Then the remainder of eligible Californians who did not receive a previous stimulus payment will receive a debit card by January 15th. And these inflation relief payments are part of the $300 billion of state budget approved early this year by the California lawmakers. So we can see everybody that President Biden and the Democrats are doing all that it takes to send out the stimulus check. So, huge news, $3 billion are being returned to taxpayers. The lawmakers have announced that many people were able to claim a surprise stimulus check in just a few weeks. So, this is some exciting. The state officials have actually announced in Massachusetts that people must return just short of $3 billion in surplus tax revenue to taxpayers. The state auditor confirmed that the Baker administration, which is the administration of the governor in Massachusetts, estimates that around $3 billion in excess tax revenue must be returned under this new voter-approved law. Now, it's the second time the law will return the money to Massachusetts residents. Now, early this week, the administration and the finance secretary said that they anticipated that the taxpayer should actually be a big chunk and a back-to-back -back chunk of the surplus in the proportion that they paid it. But they did not offer details about when or how they could expect to get the money. The state's tax hall blew far beyond expectations for the past two years, allowing individuals to bulk up the rainy day savings account balance to about $7 billion, and this caused the 1986 voter-approved law. The state's tax hall blew far beyond expectations, everybody, allowing officials to bulk up the rainy day savings account balance to about $7 billion. And now, under this law, everybody, $2 billion will be going to the American people. The governor, last month, filed a fiscal year closeout budget that sets aside around $3 billion to be returned to taxpayers and leaves the legislature about $1.5 billion to spend. Select residents in Massachusetts are already going to start receiving $500 direct payments from the state. This is part of the state's essential employee premium pay program. This will help out so many people. So many people folks will get this money and get the stimulus checks that they need. Now the latest round of relief payments went out to more than 300,000 residents. In the first year of the crisis, the federal government issued around three stimulus checks. Three stimulus checks helped out so many people, we know that for sure. And the payments are open to Massachusetts also. The Massachusetts residents who worked and filed a return, that is. Eligible single filers who earn no more than 39000 but that threshold increases for larger household sizes. A family of four with income less than seventy nine grand can receive the full payment. Although the short-term economic pressures that caused the federal stimulus checks have eased, the financial consequences of the crisis are still being felt by millions upon millions of people. One state official has said that, obviously with an inflation rate, this relief is not going to last very long, but it might help with your gas bills and some of the incidentals that are racking up right now. I recognize the chair of the full Commerce Committee, Senator Cantwell, for an opening statement. Thank you, Chair Sinema. Thanks for chairing this important hearing along with your colleague, Ranking Member Cruz, and the important witnesses that we're having today. I also want to thank you. You mentioned the Chips and Science Act and want to thank you for your help and leadership in the final days of our negotiations and getting that done. Today, we're here to hear from a set of witnesses to talk about the current issues of aviation and the fact that an FAA bill is due for reauthorization next year. Uh, this is an opportunity to talk about the prospects of that and what needs to be addressed. Today's hearing will specifically examine how Congress can help advance aerospace safety and innovation and what we need to do for the future, whether that is drones to new air mobility concepts. So I look forward to hearing from all of the witnesses. I'm especially happy to hear from Gregory Davis, President and CEO of Eviation. I want to congratulate Eviation on yesterday's first flight of Alice, the first time an all-electric consumer aircraft built from the ground up took flight. 
I wish we had time to show the video from it because you can hear a lot of cheers at Moses Lake from everybody there for this historic occasion. This groundbreaking aircraft took flight from a 13,000 foot runway at Moses Lake Flight Test Center in the heart of Washington, along with local partner companies like Magna X and Aerotech. I can see why this project has been so successful. Electric aircraft like Alice built using 95% composite materials represent an inspiring promise of American built innovation and exciting future of sustainable aviation. Locations like Moses Lake show how a combination of public infrastructure and private sector ingenuity create a hotbed for developing next generation aerospace technology. Aviation and advanced air mobility concept provide an opportunity to expand connectivity to regionally and underserved communities and airports. We know that all, I'm sorry, we know that half of all flights in the U.S. are less than 50, sorry, 500 miles in range. So yesterday's successful integration test flights proved the concept that we have sustainable aviation technology and that it can transport people to these short and middle mile regional routes. This significantly can reduce the aviation's industry environmental impacts in terms of carbon emission and noise pollutions, and achieving the technical milestones enables companies like Aviation to focus on commercialization of aircraft like Alice in line with the evolution of battery technology, something that was a very key part of the Chips and Science Act. And the FAA certification process will also have to be there to move forward on the all-electric flight if it is to become an industry standard. But for me, I think the CEO has said it best, that these new opportunities... Other credits that could result in lowering your tax burden or even a large refund include the earned income, the tax credit, and the child independent care credit. The latter was made refundable in 2021, meaning up to $8,000 could get reimbursed on expenses for daycare and such, which show up on tax refunds. However, that welcome households that welcome the new family member could also be eligible for $1,400 for the third economic stimulus check. We have a lot of good news but the fourth stimulus payment that I want you to know, so continue watching the video. President Biden is now meeting with Democrats and Republicans to finally reach an agreement on the next package. Americans are urging President Biden to sign a new executive order that would allocate billions of dollars towards a fourth round of payments. So we have some good news. President Biden's administration is actually going to renew its push with lawmakers to secure crisis funding this week. That's according to a White House official that told CNN that following an action from the Senate on a $10 billion funding package, it is likely a deal will be reached very soon. The White House official has said as Congress turns back to work, the Biden administration will be focused on working with lawmakers to secure the funds to keep aid flowing and continue protecting the American people from the crisis. The Biden administration has been sounding the alarm for weeks that additional funding is needed to continue the federal crisis even as it seeks return to normal. The Biden administration also requested $22.5 billion in supplemental crisis relief funding in a massive government funding package, but it was removed from the bill. It included funding for the crisis, testing, and treatments. Negotiators were able to reach an agreement on a scaled-back $10 billion package, but Congress left Washington earlier this month without passing a bipartisan bill amid a disagreement over some policies. The inaction before the break marked a second time a deal on a crisis relief package has been scuttled over in just over a month. In March, a $15.6 billion package has been negotiated on by the House representatives and Senate leaders, but it collapsed because people couldn't agree on how to pay for it. And one of the major promises made by President Biden's election campaign was landmark the decision, decision to cancel student debt. Over a year into the presidency, and nothing has happened of that sort. It has, been proving, it has been proving to be a major stumbling block for the Democrats as they approach the midterm elections in November. After canceling much of the crisis-era spending plans, voters who are not inspired to vote for the Democrats and a large-scale defeat is extended. Rural America, inner-city America, suburban America, throughout every single school district in America. That's part of the whole legislation we passed in terms of infrastructure. It started now, it's going to create millions of jobs as well. For real. But again, we got to get in the 21st century. We got to move. And I, the budget I propose supports schools, supports students, and supports you. The bridge, to bridge the gap between under-resourced schools 
and their wealthier counterparts. We're proposing a $19 billion increase in Title I schools, and mostly historically neglected, underfunded schools in our nation. We got to get, we got to let them catch up. That investment would more than double the current funding in Title I schools. And also, also proposing the largest increase in special education funding in two decades. We made the promise we've never failed to fulfill it. We've got to fulfill it. We're going to add another billion dollar commitment with the goal of doubling the number of social workers, school counselors, and school nurses in K through 12. And by the way, thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we're making real progress toward that goal. And to support you, the educators, my budget includes $610 million increase teacher diversity, effectiveness, and retention. It's true. As all, as all of you know, it takes time to become a teacher, the teachers you are today. But nearly one in 10 teachers leaves the profession every year, with the youngest teachers being the most likely ones to leave first. So we've got to invest in ways to keep them in the profession. This year, my administration helped over 150 public servants, including teachers, get 150,000 get school forgive forgiveness loans for college loans through changes we made in the public service loan forgiveness program. The last team kind of messed it up. We've Adding up to an extra four grand over the next two years. Senator Warren said it's increasing Social Security benefits. It's the quickest way to get money out the door during an economic time like this. And the idea of boosting Social Security benefits by 200 bucks per month was also included in President in Elizabeth Warren's presidential campaign platform. The move comes as many Social Security beneficiaries feel left out. Senator Chuck Schumer, Senator Mitch McConnell has also put forward a proposal that included SSI, Social Security Income. However, because the plan urges and uses income from 2018 tax returns as a qualifier, it can leave out many people. We have a ton of news to go over, but the Fort Sim must check. Continue watching this video to find out the latest news on this. President Biden is finally taking and helping the American people. Find President Biden is taking action and ready to help the people. Here's some breaking news, everybody. Iris Commissioner Chuck Reddick has just sounded the alarm over the agency's massive backlog of unprocessed returns, which he warned could lead to a challenging tax season. In a statement for Yahoo News, IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick acknowledged that millions of people are still waiting for priors for the prior year's tax returns to be processed and refund checks to arrive in the mail, but committed to returning to normal inventory levels before next year. Chuck Reddick also said we have taken extraordinary measures to work through this time. But the big news is for people that are currently waiting to receive tax refund payments for this year. Chuck Reddick noted the agency is also grossly understaffed. And according to the Congressional Budget Office, it is 20,000 fewer staff than it did in 2010. And this is going to cause some backlog. That was planned in the backdrop of the imminent invasion of Ukraine. But that became, uh, obviously, the centerpiece of the Munich Security Conference. Many of us have gone to that conference over the years uh, to talk about security, economy, and how that relates to security, and governance and how that relates to security. In fact, those three things, security, e econ economy, and governance, are the purpose of any foreign travel of members of Congress. The, Mar Mar um, the Munich conference, it, it gives us a distilled way to see so many leaders from so many countries on those subjects. And at this time, of course, the focus was Ukraine. Uh, we had large more than one delegation, but around 40 members of Congress, House and Senate, Democrats and Republicans, all united in our support for the transatlantic uh, alliance, uh, NATO, uh, all of us 